Hello, my friends. It's Nick, the ASMR nerd. And today, we're going to take a look at this little indie game called Coromon. Coromon appears to be a kind of modern take on classic monster taming games, primarily Pokemon. It is clearly very heavily inspired by Pokemon, as you will see. Uh, this game just came out and was actually brought to my attention by a community member on our Discord. So, uh, Taco, thank you for bringing this game to my attention. I saw your post about it and uh, I thought it looked so cool. Uh, you guys know I'm a big fan of Pokemon, especially classic Pokemon games, and this really just looks like it's going to scratch that itch. Um, it has gorgeous pixel art. It looks like it was really developed by people who, who love those games and wanted to, to take those sort of classic gameplay tropes and, and put a modern twist on them and, uh, you know, sprinkle on some of their own, their own creativity. So that's what I'm hoping anyway, but I've not played it yet. I <laughs> just picked this up on Steam. Uh, and if you're interested in doing so, I, I will put a link down below in the video description as well. But this is not sponsored or anything. This is literally just me thinking this game looks really neat and thinking that you all might enjoy seeing it as well. So, without further ado, let's find out what Coromon is all about. Okay, so, well, let's pick save slot one. Oh, we're sleeping. Knock, knock. Classic start. <laughs> Mother says, rise and shine, honey. Didn't you hear your alarm? <laughs> Don't close your eyes again. Today is your first day of work at Lux Solus. What is Lux Solus? Quest started. Oh, something. It disappeared very fast. Why don't you put on something nice? You want to make a good impression. Okay, so we have some... Oops. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, so we can pick a skin down here. So let's go with sure defaults. Not sure what's going on over here. Oh gosh, there's a bunch of shirts. Wow, okay. Huh, I see. Okay. Um, yeah, that looks okay. Can we use bumpers? Yes, we can to move back and forth. I'm just playing on an Xbox controller. The game also supports uh, keyboard and mouse and keyboard, evidently. I think it's also available on Switch, if you wanted to play it that way as well. Uh, which top do we like? Oh my gosh, there's a lot of options. Holy cow. Uh, Alright, let's go... Oh, I don't know. I'm colorblind, they all kind of look samey anyway. Well, not samey, I shouldn't say that. They look differently colored, but... It's hard for me to really judge. Now oh, let's go with this. Looks like we've got kind of a green top and a white vest, maybe. All right. Uh, glasses. I see. Because of the limited number of pixels, it just looks like we're really tired. <laughs> we have glasses on. It looks like huge bags under our eyes. Let's just go with these ones. That That feels accurate, you know? Accurate to how I feel. <laughs> uh, hair. Oh, lots of choices. Uh, let's see. I have kind of long, straight hair. Let's go with this. 
Yeah. Ah, facial hair. Excellent. We do get a beard. Uh, some of you might have seen that I actually recently had to trim my epic beard and mustache. It was just getting to be a little too much, so I feel like this one here is maybe not as representative as it was a couple weeks ago. Um, but And that one definitely not. But I feel like this... Oops. Maybe that one there. Yeah, sure. Or like that one. A little more mustached. Mustached. Let's go with that one. I kind of like that one more. Hair color. Ah, let's go blonde. Yeah. That's probably the closest. It's a little bright for me, but... I could go like a light brown. Is that what we started with? Oops. No, that's not what I meant to do. We'd have a randomized button in the top right there. You might see there. Uh, you know what? This is actually probably closer. This is kind of brownish. Somewhere in between, really. But And headgear. You know, I'm not much of one for hats. But I do appreciate that we can be a cowboy if we want. Or uh, wear a frog hat. Or even a panda. The headphones kind of work. You know, because I I do sometimes wear, well, I'm currently wearing headphones to monitor my audio as I record, but nah, we'll go sans headgear. All right, you look great. I sure do. Let's go. And to your name. Uh, let's go here. Let's go here. And there. There. Ta-da. All right. Nice. Feeling pretty good. Okay, so move around with D-pad on the controller or with left analog stick, whatever you prefer. Um, uh, we can change our, our appearance here should we want to. Just by coming back to the mirror. That's great. I hold A to run, it looks like. Yeah, I like that they have a little action box down in the right corner there to show when we can interact with the thing. Like this. What's this? Ah, the pocket money I've been saving. Now's the time to use it. Found 500 gold. It's just pocket money. <laughs> can we read this book? does not appear so. Thought maybe that would show us something. Cannot check the garbage can. How about our computer? Certainly. Which game shall I play? Swarmy Rush? Flappy Swarmy? Or never mind, okay, what's a Swarmy Rush? Oh my gosh, it's a whole game inside a game. Love that. Uh, oh, that was poor. Okay, one more go. This must be one of their, uh, Koromon, I guess. A Swarmy. I, I tell you guys, if you go watch the trailer for this game, well, I mean, you're watching a video about it right now, I guess, but if you want to see more of what the game looks like later on, because, you know, we're going to only get an hour in or something, uh, then, uh, I encourage you to go check out the trailer on Steam because some of the monster designs just look super cool. Okay, I think we might have to end this. <laughs> this could go for a while. <laughs> this is not what we came here to play. Uh-oh, okay, there we go. No, I will not try again. Thank you, though. That was fun. All right. What's this? We got some pizza boxes or something. Oh, we can change our clothing here. That makes sense. I don't think those are supposed to be pizza boxes, but <laughs> what's this? I still remember the day I won this poster. It was a triumph. Ah, it's a portal reference. 
because it's a companion cube poster, guys. Check it out. That's cute. Okay. What's all this? What's all this? Oh, this must be our parents' room. It's mom in her younger years. She's so pretty. I wonder if well, it'll be the classic Pokemon trope of our father has disappeared mysteriously. <laughs> Pokemon games not, not so into the father figures. We're going to read our mom's diary. Uh-oh. Dear diary, tomorrow is what we've been waiting for. It's the first day of Nick's dream job. I'm so proud. I better hurry and make a reservation at Nick's favorite breakfast place. Are we going to go for breakfast? I am all about breakfast. I, I actually, I like breakfast food. I don't like mornings, so I'm more really all about brunch. The current time is... Yeah, that's accurate. That is, in fact, accurate. <laughs> Nobody on the phone. Who's this? Dexter. I broke your Swarmy Rush high score last night. Ha! <laughs> Beaten by your little bro. Classic. Classic young sibling rivalry. I actually, I have a younger brother. We got along pretty good when we were kids. I also like that these look like Super Nintendo game pads. My favorite video game, Swarmy Rush. Good morning. Good morning, Nick. You're looking sharp. Why, thank you. You must be so excited. You're finally going to become a Luxasolus battle researcher. A battle researcher, okay. To celebrate your new job, I made a reservation at your favorite breakfast place. I know. Uh, if we can head there before going to the station. I'm very hype about this. That sounds great. It does. Come on. Dexter, dear, please keep an eye on the cakes in the oven. Wait, hold on a second. Our little bro has to stay here while we go have a nice breakfast. Okay, Mom. Now we know who the favorite child here is. Pizza with pineapple. Delicious. I feel like that's one of the devs making a statement, and I agree. Pizza with pineapple, delicious. Fight me. It's a lot of books. There are cakes in the oven, but these need a little more time. Alright. You know, this game already has a lot of heart, I can tell. Uh, it's pr pretty charming so far. Let's go. A delicious breakfast later. Oh, we don't get to experience the breakfast. I feel slightly cheated. So here we are, Nick, at the starting line of your own adventure. Look at you all grown up and choosing your own path in life. I'm a little sad to see you go, but I'm also very proud of you. Ever since you were little, you've been dreaming of working for Luxolus. I know you're ready for this. I also love how she's talking to us like we're, like, I don't know, 15 and about to, like, leave home and never come back or something. And I've got this, like, epic beard going on. Uh, that's why I got you a little something. I've been saving up for this day so you don't have to worry about gold. Here you go. Don't spend it all in one place. I hope she taught us about budgeting if we're going to go, like, live on our own or something. <laughs> 3,000 gold. Aw, oh, thanks, Mom. That's very sweet. I'll make good use of it. Glad to hear that, honey. Oh, look. I can see the train approaching. Yeah, I wonder if the implication is we're off to go on an adventure, kind of like a Pokemon adventure. Do you have everything you need? Your backpack? Your ticket? Clean underwear? 
Don't worry, Mom. I'm old enough to take care of myself. I like to think we're a little older than the 10 years old that is traditional for Pokemon. <laughs> the thought of just sending 10 year olds out into the world to, on their own to like fight other people and steal their money and it's just absurd it's hilarious but oh better get going the train's about to depart you better get on before it leaves without you but first a big hug oh cute off i go goodbye mom oh sad mom <laughs> goodbye dear Aw, oh, poor mom. At least she has Dexter. We know that Dexter's not her favorite, but... Consolation, sibling, I guess. Consolation, son. All right. You know, I have to say, Lux Solus kind of sounds like a very evil corporation. Like, I don't know, doesn't it? It just sounds like an evil corporation that's going to take over the world. Guess we'll find out. What's all this? Train departure times. I'm not leaving anytime soon. Okay. Okay, what's all this? At Lux Solus, we offer trainers the opportunity to customize their experience. Most trainers pick the normal difficulty, but selecting a higher difficulty could be worth the challenge. So that's one thing. I really have no idea how challenging this game will be. I don't know if it expects everyone to be Pokemon veterans, and normal will be properly balanced, or will normal be dead easy. <laughs> A floating globe. How does this even work? This looks difficult. Uh, do we talk to the receptionist? Motivation in a mug. This is someone's coffee. Okay. Alright, let's talk to this person behind the counter. Hello, and welcome to Luxolus Campus. How may I assist you? Uh, hello, my name's Nick. I'm starting out as a battle researcher today. A new colleague? How lovely. I think you'll have a wonderful time working for Lux Solus. Please give me a moment while I check your registration. Aha, I see. It looks like we still need to know your preferred difficulty. With this, we can personalize your adventure. Now, this is a feature that Pokemon does not have, and that many people have requested for years. I really feel like this game is like the result of big Pokemon fans who are like, here's our long li list of things that we wish Pokemon did or did differently or better. <laughs> and then they went and made their own game. Really getting those vibes. Uh, most trainers use the normal difficulty, which I would recommend for the regular experience. Take this handbook and read it well. It explains the differences of each difficulty in detail. Difficulty handbook. Okay, I'll read it carefully. Okay, let's take a quick gander here. If you want a challenge, we might want to go higher than normal. Yep, I'm curious what that changes. Okay, easy. Uh, okay. The monsters restore their HP when they level up. Shop items are cheaper. When your Coromon faint. Revives are not necessary. Use a healing cake. Alright. Normal is just typical. Hard. If one of your Coromon faints, it will leave your squad. Heeding the call of the wild, it returns to its habitat. So this is something closer to a Nuzlocke, you know? You can't escape from any battles. Real trainers stand up for themselves. Insane difficulty. The most challenging difficulty. 
You can't use any recall items, forcing you to travel through Coromon habitats. You may only catch one Coromon in each area using the Lux Lure. If it faints, you are out of luck. Though you are free to capture any perfect Coromon. I don't know what that means. So, yeah, I guess that's closer to an actual Nuzlocke. Or hard, it just sort of has, the, if the Pokemon faints, it's it's done. Deal. Interesting. Sorry, the Coromon. I'm definitely going to be calling it Pokemon by accident. Ah, uh, we can customize as well. Well, let's just pick normal. That seems good. Oh, we got... <laughs> sleepy face, happy face, cool face, dead face. <laughs> I want to enjoy the normal experience. Yeah, that seems legit. Yeah, let's do it. Thank you. I've made all the necessary adjustments for you. You can return to that computer at any time to change your difficulty. Great. Before we continue, could you tell me if you've followed a Lux Solus trainer course before? I must admit this is my first visit. Thank you. Every battle researcher requires a gauntlet in order to carry Coromon safely around Vel... Velua? Or it must be Velua. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell with the pixel font sometimes. <laughs> we have several color variations from which you can choose. Oh, a literal gauntlet. Okay. One moment, please. We have the... Gela Blue variant, the Patterbit Green variant, and last but not least, the Infinix Red variant. Please choose the one you like the most. Uh, I do, oops. I like green personally, so let's, let's go with that. Alright. I uh, I definitely do look great. This game is very affirming. I got my green gauntlet. Nice. Good choice. That one goes well with your eyes. Oh, thanks. Literally, it, it does. I have green eyes. Please take this Lux Recall RC. This state-of-the-art device allows for a streamlined training experience. That's probably the recall, maybe? Your first stop will be the Coralmon Lab, where Gideon will help you get started. You can find him in the next building. Over. Have fun and shine bright. Okay, thanks. Alright, quest updated prologue. Let's go talk to Gideon. Okay. Yeah, this game has some really nice pixel art graphics. It's very pretty. Who's this? Neil. Hmm? You want some advice for a new battle researcher? Well, uh, I once forgot where I had to go for my quest, but then I remembered I could check my logbook in the menu to see where I had to go. Keep that in mind if you get lost. Another feature that Pokemon lacks <laughs> is a quest log. <laughs> Again, it really feels like this is fairly reactionary to, you know, classic Pokemon design, but in a good way, you know, Coromon Lab. Who's this? Cheryl. My sister can buy all the stuff she wants because she's become such a successful battle researcher. That's why I'm following in her footsteps. We got some street signs here. West is Campus Station, that's where we came from. North is the Coromon Lab, that's where we're going. Southwest, the Battlegrounds. I doubt we're going there yet. Shop Assistant says, oh, is that a fresh face? You're in luck. We're running a special promotion. All new battle researchers get free coupons for a discount on their next purchase at any of our shops. Hey. Oh, quite a few, well, two, I guess. 
go coupon crazy on us. Use them wisely. Hello, trainer. Be sure to visit our shop if you're in need of supplies. Blah, blah, blah. Every major city. So this is the mart, basically. Oh, yeah, this area. I see. Okay, this is a pretty big town area. Maybe we'll come back out here and talk to some of these people. Once we've talked to, um... The guy whose name I already forget. But presumably they're in here. Peter. Ah, you must be the new battle researcher I've heard so much about. Gideon is the one that'll get you up to speed. Let me fetch him for you. Mm hmm. Huh. Looks like Gideon is out for lunch. But no worries. I can take a quick break to get you everything you need. Follow me. First of all, let me grab you a data chip. Received a data chip. The data chip is a nifty chip for your gauntlet that will record every Coromon related action you take. All the data is sent back to us where it's analyzed right here in this very lab. As an incentive for sending us oodles of interesting data, you will be rewarded handsomely, of course. So this is kind of the Pokedex equivalent, I guess. Milestones and promotion bonuses can be redeemed right in your menu. Isn't that handy? It's pretty simple stuff. I'm sure you'll figure it all out as you get more comfortable at the job. All right, all right. You're almost good to go. But you wouldn't get far without our generous employee starter package. We got some spinners, some HP cakes, some SP cakes, two relax recalls, a type manual. The type manual in there will be especially invaluable throughout your journey. I suggest taking a quick gander at it before setting out. Oh wow, okay, these are all the different typings. Holy cow, how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 13 different types. What are they? Normal, electric, ghost, sand. I guess that's like a ground type or a rock type sort of combined. Fire, ice, water, magic, foul. I guess that's like demons and things maybe. A heavy type. <laughs> it's a whole type of its own. Air, poison, and cut type. Interesting. Oh, some of these types are skill only types. What does that mean? It says right there, skill only. So I guess the creatures are always one of these types, maybe. That's seven different types, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fascinating. We've got six skill only types. I don't know if, if Coromon can have multiple types, can't have skills that are off type. I have no idea. I don't know if clearly there's strengths and weaknesses. Like normal resists ghost, but also doesn't do much to ghost and takes double damage from poison, but doesn't do extra damage to anything. All right, these are going to take some time to learn, these relationships, you know. Fascinating. Well then, I know how excited you must be to get your very own Coromon. Nelson will provide you with one downstairs. That's pretty much it for me. I gotta get back to work now. New traits don't discover themselves, you know. Huh. Gosh, there's a lot of people to talk to here. Oh look, it's Nicholas. This screen updates whenever one of our battle researchers achieves a milestone. The volume of data we obtain is mind-boggling. Guess this must be a world map. This must be the largest display I've ever seen. Yeah, it's pretty big. 
This looks like a person with a coral mod. Sid, over the years we've gathered so much data on skills. Thanks to this, our scientists were able to embed some of them into skill flashes. Bet you that's like a TM. Oh, I want to talk to the coral mod, but I can't get over there. Too bad. Who's this? Afra. Hold on tightly to that Lux Recall RC. It enables us to bring you back to the Lux Solus camp campus in an emergency. Yeah, that's definitely a handy thing. Another thing that seems kind of reactionary to Pokemon, you know? Having a basically a town portal. Christopher says, uh, When I got my Nimblegar, I had a different color than what I'm used to. That sparked my interest. Now I'm dedicated to uncovering every possible variation of Coromon. This seems really cool. What's down the stairs? A bunch of pods. It's a little creepy. Or who knows? Well, who's this? Oh, right. He told us to come down here to get our coral mod. It's Nelson. Ha! Ah, that smell. The smell of a starry eyed battle researcher here to receive their first coral mod. I smell. What do I? I don't. What does a starry-eyed battle researcher smell like? I don't. Anyway, this is a little awkward, Nelson. Just hold tight a moment while I finish updating the Coromon connectifier. Now I'm just sitting here wondering if I forgot my deodorant this morning. That should do it. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Nelson, head of the Coromon Lab. Let's connect you to a coral mod. We'll run a series of tests to find the one which is most suited to your personality. I can't wait. That's the enthusiasm I love to hear. Let me just hop over and take some quick measurements. Let me see. Hmm. Oh. Okay, is this not any less awkward, Nelson? Now comes the fun part. The machine is ready to scan your brainwaves. Please enter. Uh, okay, all right, here we go. Please keep still during the scan, otherwise you might lose an arm, or worse, damage my machine. All right, let's do this thing. Analysis commence. I will now ask you a series of questions while the machine measures your brain activity. Question one, you encounter a wild coral mod. What is your first reaction? Hmm. Well, that's my first. Probably not attack right away. Do we try and capture it? No. Let's see what it does. Let's observe. That's the scientific approach. I see. I would do that too. Question two. What is your motivation for becoming a battle researcher? I want to protect the environment. I want to earn a good living. I want to tame the strongest coral mon. Uh, I'll be an environmentalist. That's some good motivation right there. Question three. Which of these three attacks appeals the most? Toughen up, fiery breath, or inner peace? Hmm. I think fiery breath sounds pretty cool. It doesn't really sound very environmentalisty though. I mean, inner peace, maybe. But inner peace sounds kind of boring. I'll go with fiery breath. Not my favorite, but let's continue. Wow. Question four. Which of these colors appeal to you the most? Arctic blue, navy blue, 
or crimson red. Uh, you know, I'm kind of a navy blue sort of guy. I mean, green's really my favorite color, but I like a nice navy blue. That's the same color as my living room. <laughs> Thanks, Nelson. And the final question. Describe your ideal first date, Nelson. This is not any less awkward. You got me trapped here and you ask anyway. Uh, candlelit dinner museum tour or skydiving. I do enjoy me a nice candlelit dinner, but I feel like that's, that's, you know, going in pretty hard on your first date. I feel like a museum tour, that's a great way to get to know someone a little better, better break the ice, you know. Skydiving, right out of the question. <laughs> we'll go with a museum tour. Ah, so romantic. Uh, Nelson? All done? Watch your step. That wasn't so hard now, was it? Piece of cake. Fantastic. You must be excited to hear the results. I am. I have no idea what kind of Coromon we're going to get. Stand in front of the hatches when you're ready. Here are your options. Oh, announcing the fire Coromon, Toruga. This Coromon is very strong, loves to battle, and can learn powerful moves. Nibblegar, a water type Coromon. This Coromon has high endurance in battles and is able to outlast most other Coromon. So I got a tanky type. And finally, the Ice Coromon, Cub Zero. This Coromon is a jack of all trades, the perfect balance between offense and defense. Fascinating. So we're presented with a, a fire, a water, and an ice. I wonder if those actually change based on your answers to those questions or if you always get kind of the same ones and now oh maybe we don't get to pick I don't know why they would present all three if we don't have any choice <laughs> and now the results of your analysis I bet we get the middle guy well although we did say fire breath so maybe we get the fire guy I don't know the algorithm points to one clear winner. Ah, there you go. The water Coromon, Nibblegar. You'll surely get far. Or with the water Coromon, Nibblegar, you'll surely get far. Why don't you take a closer look? Trust your instincts and pick the one you like the most. Uh, so you do get a choice, but they recommend based on the algorithm. Well, let's take a quick look at each. It's a little bit of a terrifying noise. So, this is like attack focused. Okay. So, the stats are HP, speed, attack, defense, special attack, and special defense, just like in Pokemon. Um, he's pretty cute. He's a little fire turtle. Little fire, fire tortoise, I guess. There's Nipplegar, a, a literal shark. The stat differences are pretty slight, aren't they? A little bit on the slow side, though. Yeah. <laughs> Cup Zero is like a snowball thing. A snowball, uh, I guess, cub. A little bear. Okay. Well, I guess we'll go with Nibblegar. Sharks are cool. With the high endurance Nibblegar, we'll get through even the most dire situations. Let's do it. Uh, we'll skip nicknames for now. Do you guys normally nickname your Pokemon? Some games I do, some games I don't. Really depends on how creative I'm feeling. But I'm happy to just go with the default names for now. Nibblegar. The algorithm never lies. Your Nibblegar seems to have the vigilant trait. Very useful indeed. But you won't get far out there with just one coral mod. Take this patter bit for extra protection. 
Wait, we just got given another random Pokemon. Or Koromon. Huh. Cool. Also, I like how they're just like, these Koromon are our slaves, and you can just have whatever you want. <laughs> I guess not that different from Pokemon, I guess, in that regard. Uh, now that you've got your Koromon, let's give that data chip of yours a test run. I'll activate your Lux Recall RC to take us to the battlegrounds. Hold on. Oh, we're gonna do a test battle. Here we are. Are you prepared for your first battle? Uh, <laughs> we're gonna battle? Aren't you an expert? Uh, don't worry. It'll be a fair fight. I've brought my Cub Zero, which has the same level as your Nibble Car. Helpful tip. If you hold down on your skills, you'll get a detailed overview of their effects. Be sure to try it out if you're ever confused what a skill does. Good luck, Nick. Give it your all. Ready? Let's jam. Okay. I love how detailed these battlefields are, eh? Okay. Items, squad, run, and uh, attack. Ah, we can bring up Cub Zero's details. So, two times a week to fire, which we're not. And, uh, heavy, I guess that was. Unfortunately, it resists water damage. <laughs> this music is a real bop. Okay. Well, let's see if it's possible to use something that's not water. We've got Chomp. Uh, which is a foul type. Power 40, accuracy 100, category physical. It's very Pokemon-like. Very Pokemon-like. Chomp the target with razor sharp teeth. Can, oh, inflict bleeding. That's something the Pokemon do not do. Or mighty roar. The user lets out a mighty roar, decreasing the attack of the opposing team by one stage. Interesting. Huh. Okay. Well. And uh, mighty roar costs no SP. Chomp costs two. We have 22 SP. So, I guess that's kind of like mana in a sense. I wonder if it's restored between fights. It must be. Alright, well, let's try chomping. Cute pose. <laughs> uh oh. It's our attack. Oh, defense decrease. Okay. Now, let's just keep chomping away. That's often the best strategy in these early game battles. Just keep attacking. Oh, we got a crit. Uh, scratch. Classic. Yikes, I thought we were supposed to like be pretty tanky, but that scratch actually did a decent amount of damage. Another scratch. Oh, of course, because he reduced our defense, right. Okay, let's hope this chomp does it. And that'll do it. Another crit. I got some XP. Oh man, this is so Pokemon. It feels really good. I, I like it. feels really polished. Uh, we've leveled up. One more SP, two more hit points, everything went up a bit. Ah, we unlock a bubble burst. Damage the target with bubbles. Has a 20% chance to lower the target's speed. Cool. A milestone achieved. Impressive. It gives me some money because that's how it goes. Well done. You and your Koromon are going to make quite a team. I just know it. Remember that you can visit a trainer hub at any time to restore your squad back to full health. So that's a Pokemon Center equivalent. Thanks for the tip. Am I ready to catch some Koromon on my own now? Absolutely. You can start by exploring Radiant Park. 
I'm on it. Wait, there's one more thing. I advise you not to pass the bridge yet. The coral mound past that point are generally less beginner friendly. Larry from the R&D lab can hook you up with a gauntlet module to keep you safe. You can find the lab in Radiant Park. Best of luck, Nick. I'll be at the Coromon lab if you need me. Shine bright. Okay. Wow. Um. Okay, I don't think we can actually talk to these people here. Oh, we can. Drake says, that's my son over there. I advised him to check the name tag of the Coromon he's facing. Ah, we already figured that out. Doing this allows him to see the opponent's SP, stat modifications, and type weaknesses. He's been doing much better since. I'm not going to lie, being able to see typing matchups is a real help, especially right off the bat here. And especially, especially if some of them are going to be different than Pokemon, you know? Jeremy says, I'll become the best battle researcher ever. Classic. Robert says, I'm so happy that Lux Solus introduced the youth program. It enables us to help young talents to get some first-hand experience with Coromon battles. Huh. Who is this? Zara. I love watching other trainers battle. There's so many strategies you can employ. Personally, I like to focus on depleting the SP of my opponent. Oh, so you can reduce their SP. If you take it all the way down, can they just not do anything? That seems a little harsh. Then I have a free attack when they need to rest. Ah, oh, so when their SP is depleted, the opponent gets an extra turn. Clever, okay. Now that is obviously quite different from Pokemon. Pokemon moves have MP. But, uh, oh nice, got some random cakes, <laughs> but uh, MP are, um, preserved between battles, you know, um, and they're kind of what compels you to go to the Pokemon Center a lot of the time. Well, not very usually it's HP, I guess, but anyway, Jacoby says, finding young talent is an important part of our business. We want to keep gathering relevant data, now and in the future. Between you and me, I don't think these two will make the cut. Wait, which two? <sighs> which two? Cindy says, I think my supervisor notices my talent, don't you agree? Ooh, Cindy, I, uh, uh, you just keep, you just keep plugging away. <laughs> Good luck, Cindy. Cindy. I like these bird sprites just kind of flying around in the trees. The heck is this? Welcome to the battlegrounds, where new trainers can hone their battle skills. A new challenge will be starting soon. Trainers will be informed when more info is available. Give it your best and aim for the sun. All of their little catchphrases are, you know, related to the Lux Solus theme somehow. Like, shine bright. Okay. Wow. Who's this? Tim, convenience is my passion. I'm so proud that the fast travel network I've worked on is being used by battle researchers from all over Vel Velua. I don't know how to pronounce this. Velua. Nowadays, every trainer, every trainer hub has this high tech marvel right outside of their doors. So this will be where the fast travel brings us to. Not working yet, though. Um, well, I guess we should probably check out the trainer hub and the mart over here. I, I just kind of want to go catch some Coromon, but, you know, got to do our diligence and look around a bit. My Coromon got hurt on our last battle. I'm buying enough HP cakes this time. 
so I can reach Hayville safely. That must be our next town. Yasmin. All these items will be so useful, but I can't afford any. Uh, maybe I could challenge other battle researchers to earn some milestones. And then he doesn't challenge me. Rude. Um, I don't know why Yasmin over there didn't just go to the trainer center or whatever the heck it's called. Okay. So we can buy HP cakes. SP cakes. Uh, status effect removers. Classic. Uh, okay, spinners, which I think are Pokeballs. Yeah, for catching Coromon. A plain spinner. Efficiently catch a normal type Coromon or just a generic spinner. Okay, so like, yeah, interesting. Oh, and we can buy Lux Recalls, but they're 500 apiece. Yikes. Okay. All right, let's go check out the trainer center. I don't think that's what it's called. <laughs> I forget already <laughs> what the heck they called it. It is the, oh, well, just the Lux Solace logo. We should probably heal our Coromon to be fair, Nibblegar. Jan says, man, one more encounter and my Coromon would have fainted. I should really visit trainer hubs more often. A trainer hub, okay. Self-care is important. Important for everyone and everything. Legit. Oh, here's this beardy guy. Hey, you. See that machine to your right? That's the Coromon storage machine. Whenever I feel like summing out a member of my squad, this is where I go. Cool, thanks, Jake. Not sure how many Coromon we get to have in our squad. Uh, six. <laughs> of course. Of course it's six. Welcome to the trainer hub. It's not Nurse Joy. It doesn't feel right. Would you like us to take care of your Coromon? Yes. One moment, please. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Thank you for waiting. We've fully restored your Coromon. Since this is your first visit to a trainer hub, don't forget to visit our other floors to experience our additional online and offline services. All right, let's see. I was gonna give him a skip, but I am curious. What's all this? We're constantly working on improving the Luxolus experience. Right now, I am working on a new training program, and I think you'll like it. Oh, I guess we can't do it yet. We're setting up training exercises for all Lux Solus battle researchers so they can work on their work, do their work more efficiently. Interesting. It looks like we can't really do anything here yet. It's funny that she would send us up here, even though there's nothing to be done. But we'll have to come back another time. And this looks pretty similar, but I don't know, different now. Longest 3v3 winning streak by SexyEd94. Cool. Personal winning streak, 5. That's not true at all. <laughs> oh well. Uh, congratulations, SexyEd94. I don't know if that's like a real person that is pulling that scoring data about, or if it's just a made-up name. Okay. Milton says, I'm working on a new gadget. I won't tell what it is, but I can give you a hint. It has to do with some buddy, some body that is very close to us right now. It's, <laughs> sorry, what? Are you implying that you've hidden a body somewhere, Milton? In, in the pond? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> uh. Uh. I don't like it. I got some combi cakes. I don't know what those do. Milton, very sketchy. Very sketchy. Oh, there's one more person to talk to over here. Is 
this something? Just a flower. Shine bright? Shine bright? <laughs> okay. I don't know why she had to say it twice. That's the Luxola's catchphrase. I'm still getting used to it though. Shine bright. Oh, I see. We said shine bright to each other. No, I didn't mean to talk to her again. Oh god, stop it. So much shine bright. I still don't trust, trust Lux Solus to not be evil, honestly. Alright. Radiant Park. Hey, we got some gold in the trash can. Perfect. We are now going to check every single trash can. Jerome says, I'm trying to capture Coromon, but they keep breaking out of my spinners. Perhaps you could help me. Could you catch one for me? That would help me ever so much. He doesn't say ever. I don't know why I added that. Come back to me when you've caught one. Anyone will do. Okay. So now we have a quest. Let's check our logbook. We haven't done that yet. Prologue. We have to find Larry at the R&D lab. And spinner problems for Jerome. You have to catch... Catchy Coromon. Let's go take a look at that world map, actually. I'm curious. Oh, and we have a milestone. Uh, okay, win five battles gets us XP. Duelist. Defeat one battle researcher. Let's claim that XP. I don't know what happens when we level up our milestone level here. Oops. Uh, oh, as we level up, we get items, it looks like. Huh. Oh, it just keeps going. Okay. Let's take a look at that world map. Ooh, it's quite bright. It's also all just shrouded in clouds. Fair enough, we haven't explored it yet. Radiant Park. Ah, okay, excellent, good. So it shows us what Coromon exists here, so we can know if we've caught them all. Well, it doesn't show us exactly which ones exist, but it shows us... I don't know if this is just showing us what we've seen, maybe? Anyway, there's some way of tracking whether you have them all or not. In a certain area, right? A beautiful area to picnic or to train your Coromon. Luxolis supervisors can often be found instructing their students. All right. What does uh, this guy say? Fred, oh, come on, Jerome, focus. Remember what I taught you. Weaken a wild Coromon to increase your chance to capture it. Just like you would expect. And what's happening over here? Briel says, when you hold down on the secondary action button, you can bind items to quickly use them later. I've seen battle researchers improve a lot with this little trick. Very nice. We got a spinner. Oh, and some HP cakes. And SP cake. Sylvia says, I love having Brielle as my supervisor. Just yesterday, she taught me that applying a condition like shock increases the chance to catch wild Coromon. Just like Pokemon. What a surprise. <laughs> Our first wild Coromon. Oh my god, that is so Pokemon. An Armado. There's our Nibble Gar. Okay. Let's uh, chomp this Armado, or shall we try? Oh my gosh, do you think we'll murder it with Bubble Burst by accident? Yeah, let's try it out. It's resting to restore its SP. Uh, that seems like a bad idea. I wonder how the AI is in this game. Because <laughs> the fact that right off the bat it would choose to rest when it's already at full SP suggests that maybe it's not the brightest. But that's hard to say. That being said, the AI in Pokemon is pretty dumb too most of the time. Okay, well, I don't know if we can really chomp it without it perishing so let's uh let's go use one of our uh uh spinners of which we have seven 
Let's go. I guess that's why they're spinners. Hey, our first capture. Uh, we can check the summary if we want. Sure. Let's see what our Mado is about. God, this music is even very Pokemon-y, isn't it? Oh, man. Okay, so it seems to be quite defensive. It's a, it looks like a little armadillo, so that makes total sense. And potential is standard. Interesting. I wonder what that means. Maybe that's kind of like EVs, in a sense. Or IVs, I guess, would be more close. Like inherent values. It's a normal type. Number 20 is common rarity. That's cool, they put the rarity right on there, too. Found in Radiant Park, caught today, level 3. You know, scratch and inspect scent. Using this keen sense of smell, the user identifies the skills the target uses. Aha! Uh -huh. So you can gain some more information about your opponent. That's always something I wish Pokemon would do. Then scratch, which we've seen already. It's a cut type move. Fascinating. Not holding anything. It has a thick skin passive ability. Its thick skin makes the Coromon immune to critical hits. Cool. Uh, we will not nickname it. Right, we got a milestone. And Nimble Guard gained a little XP. I have to say, you guys, this is really scratching the Pokemon itch, like the classic Pokemon itch. Like, I am tickled pink by this so far. Hey again, did you manage to catch a Coralmon? I did. Wait, do we have to give it to him? I don't know if I really want to give him Armado. Well, we'll show him Armado, but... Whoa, Armado! My supervisor will be so impressed. Oh, what? Just got Armado. Jerome, what are you doing? You were supposed to catch one for yourself. Give that Coromon back at once. <laughs> oh, poor Jerome. Oh, I'm sorry. He's right. Taking the easy route won't help me improve as a battle researcher. I'll give your Armado back. Hey. <laughs> and here, take these for your effort. Some silver spinners. I don't know what the difference is. I guess they're like great balls, maybe. They're a little better. They're supposed to make catching Coromon easier. I'll just have to keep on trying. <laughs> Poor Jerome. I haven't managed to catch a wild Coromon yet, but I won't give up. Come on, Jerome. Focus. Yes. All right. Ooh, something else. What could it be? Aha, uh -huh, the same exact thing. <sighs> Alright, let's just, uh... I guess we'll just beat this one, I don't know. Yeah, so your SP does recharge between battles. I wonder if resting... Well, I wonder how much SP resting recharges. Ooh, we got critically hit. The critical hits seem to be pretty frequent, you know? We've seen a few of them already. Wonder how RNG heavy the combat is. Nimblegar awakened some of its potential. Potential stats. Oh. So we get to choose. Uh, okay, so we get to choose its EVs, basically, where we want to put them. We have three points. Uh, I do not know enough about Nimblegar, or what we really want to put points into, to, to say. We can put them into HP, Attack, any of the stats, including SP, really. And this will show stats and skills. Well, let's postpone for now. I assume the next time 
we unlock another potential point, and then we can do that again. Uh, this must be the R&D lab. Let's go back to the map here. I'm curious now. Oops. Oh. I thought that it would... Maybe that's... Are these not showing creatures? Because I thought it would show Armando has been captured here. Hmm. Interesting. Oh wait, it does. It totally does, right? I see. For some reason, it had already checked it off as something we had seen, even though I, I don't think we had. What is a patter bit anyway? Summary? What is it? <laughs> it's a normal type. Yeah, it receives an Lux Solus campus. campus. It has slam. Yeah, it's just a body slam type thing. And feelers. Find the weak spots of your opponent. The next attack on the target does two and a half times the damage, but cannot be critical. Interesting. Not holding anything. And it has robber. The spoils go to the victor. Steal 50% extra gold when defeating a trainer. Huh. Uh, database. Does it tell us anything else about these creatures? It may do. Okay, here we go. That's what I was looking for. Just a little description. Our Mado are always eager to fight. They sometimes even attack humans if there are no Koromon around. Oh, so we have a standard Armado, but there are potent and perfect versions. Fascinating. Of every po every coral mine, it looks like. Where's our patter bit? There. Patter bit are popular amongst Lux Solus researchers as lab assistants due to their customizable intelligence. They're what? <laughs> They're what? Cool. Oh, right, we're not supposed to cross uh, the bridge. I should get that stink module Nelson mentioned before going any further. Uh, I don't know what a stink module is, but I guess we better go in there. Balin says, good morning. Nice day for fishing, ain't it? This river is the perfect place to catch some water, Coromon. But of course. Gotta check the garbage. Nothing there. Oh, a chest. Some HP cakes. And Gideon. Oh, we were supposed to talk to him earlier. Oh, I love coming here on my lunch breaks. The beauty of nature just washes all of my worries away. <laughs> okay. Donald. Uh, the gauntlet is a powerful tool. It can be upgraded with any amount of modules to satisfy all your needs. Hey, we got some cakes out of the garbage. I'll just eat Donald's garbage cakes. Don't mind me. Lisa says, work, work, work. Gotta work. No time for a break. It's not very healthy, Lisa. I think you need to learn some work-life balance. <laughs> like, every time we interact with the phone, it's just like, hello? Okay, bye. Can we check out Lisa's computer? We cannot. Okay. Uh-huh. What are you laughing about? You must be <laughs> the new battle researcher, Nick. Uh, yeah, I am. Who are you? Ha! <laughs> I knew it. My instincts never fail me. My name is Larry, and I will tell you all about the magical world of the gauntlet. This way, please. Uh, here we are, in the gauntlet module test area. 
that gauntlet on your arm is a technological masterpiece. Besides carrying your Coromon, it can do so much more. It's the multi-tool for Lux Solus employees. The gauntlet's modular design enables the user to install new functionality on the go. Let me give you a quick tour of some of our research. Oh boy. My colleague Velma here is there calibrating the push module. Ah, uh, so this is like HMs, basically. I think is what this gauntlet's gonna do. Uh, she's optimizing the power so that it outputs at 100% capacity. Looks cool, huh, Nick? Keep it up, Velma. And Percy over there is developing a brand new module on his own. Let's say hi. Percy, my man, can you explain what you're working on for our new colleague? Uh, the new battle researcher is taking an interest in my project. It's quite simple. You see, I started by combining a spark plug together with flammable gas to create a combustion that's... Hold up. That's way too technical. Can you demonstrate it instead? Uh, gladly. Stand back, please. <laughs> so he made a flamethrower. Whoa, careful! You pyromaniac! Uh, sorry. I got a little carried away. It's okay. No one got hurt this time. Thank you, Percy. Oh, who's that? They look pretty epic. Rigel. Larry, Nick. Wait, how do you know me? Larry, I need to borrow Nick for a bit. There are some important matters we need to go over. Ah, so Nick is the one you told me about earlier. Uh, sure, you can borrow my protege. Wait, we didn't agree to that. Well, as with most matters in life, the stink module can wait. I'll be hanging out by the bridge in Radiant Park. Come to me when you're done, Nick. I gotta go talk to Rigel. Oh, he just teleports away. It's nice to finally meet you, Nick. I'm Rigel, head of the R&D lab. Let me explain everything in the privacy of our restricted access area. Because of possible radiation exposure, we require everyone to wear a lab coat inside. That's not... That's not what you wear a lab coat for. But anyway. <laughs> oh boy. Here, I brought one that should fit you. Okay, thanks. We're now super scientist. Uh, follow me, please. Restricted access area. What was that? Welcome to the restricted access area. Pretty impressive, no? What is this floating thing in front of me? This here is what our Titan Task Force is all about. It's called Titan Essence. It started manifesting in Velua a couple of months ago. What does it do? It's up to this task force to figure that out. A team to which you will be a valuable addition. Wait, you want me to join the Titan Task Force? Yes, we do. You showed such great motivation that I had to make sure you were assigned to this team. How does he know? <laughs> we just got here. Anyway, these Titan Essences will slowly disintegrate without the right containment device. Recently, though, we made a massive breakthrough in our research. We developed a gauntlet module which will bring us one step closer to understanding Titan Essence. In this module, the Essence Collector, is able to stabilize Titan Essence as well as send us valuable research data. That's where you come in. You will be equipped with this Essence Collector. Which means your job, in addition to being a battle researcher, is to assist us in gathering Titan Essences. What if that's like boss fights, I guess, maybe? 
I wonder if there are gyms in this world. Um, no mention of gyms yet. Well, uh, that would be an honor. Where can I find these Titan Essences? Come, I'll show you. Uh, the Titan Essence in this lab was embedded within an elemental Titan on a Donar Island. But this isn't the only one in existence. Totally boss fights. We've pinpointed the location of six of these Titan essences in Velua. Our hypothesis is that when we manage to contain them together, only then will they show their true potential. I'll do my best. Tuco. Would you mind handing me the module? Of course. Uh, here you go, Nick, the essence collector. Handle it with care. Oh my. The closest Titan essence is guarded by Voltgar, the bender of storms. <laughs> Hello, new employee. You are a child, and now go fight Moldgar, the bender of storms. <laughs> oh man. Do you see Donar Island on the southeast of the map? There, in the power tower, Voltgar bends the weather and guides thunderstorms towards the island. Before you can use the Essence Collector module, we need to get it installed in your gauntlet. That's a precise task. There's only one person in Velua who is able to work with that level of precision. His name is Perrin, a good friend of mine. He works as a blacksmith in Hayville. Are you really seriously going to get a blacksmith to insert this highly technical microchip device into my thing? Okay. Perrin, the blacksmith in Hayville. Got it. How do I get there? Uh, Hayville lies just beyond Radiant Park. And when you have the module installed, a colleague in Woodlow Harbor will take you across the water to Donar Island. I will contact you on your phone if anything comes up. Good luck, Nick, and shine bright. I feel like our mother would not be pleased to know that this is what we're being assigned to on our first day of work. <laughs> this seems, you know. Okay, wow. I also like how we don't have any say in the matter. <laughs> it's just like, you're gonna go fight this titan that can bend storms to its will. Don't even worry about it. Tuco says, our invention, the essence collector, is able to absorb some of the essence of a titan. It doesn't work on normal Koromon. They simply don't have enough essence to share. Fair. This looks very unstable. I better keep my distance. It's okay, I have a lab coat on to protect myself from the radiation. Rasul says, uh, We discovered that each Titan is proficient in one element, so much even that they can bend the element to their will. Can you imagine that? The potential of thunderstorms at the tip of your fingers. I'm not convinced that Luxolus isn't evil, you guys. <laughs> Roseanne says, Before we developed our current model, the Essence Collector was quite unstable. We've destroyed quite a number of gauntlets, but it was all in the name of science. These guys are totally evil. Okay, let's, let's go. Our table shows a detailed 3D map of Villoa. Markers where Titan essences are radiating from. Oops. One for each elemental type. We design new modules for trainers to make their work easier. For example, with the push module, trainers can travel to otherwise hard to reach areas. This can lead to new Coromon discoveries. Can we loot this chest? It's locked by strong electromagnets. Maybe I can shut them down somehow. Oh, that's access for the 
the limited access area. Okay. Uh, well, it appears to be receiving something from over here. Oh, if I could push that button, I bet you, I bet you that's how to disable it. That makes sense. Well, that's not an option for now. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Oh gosh, there's so many researchers in here. There's different things for each different kind of element. Gosh, you guys. Like test rooms for each kind of element, it looks like. Huh. Well, regrettably, I think I had better wrap up this video because I think it's probably gone very long. I don't even know how long I've been playing for. But, uh, holy heck, guys. Why are there so many good games? There are too many good games. I don't have the time for all these games, but this game seems really, really cool. If you are a fan of classic Pokemon games, which of course I am. And I feel like this is a very opportune time for this game to come out because the the actual Pokemon series is, it seems like in some kind of state of transition into maybe a more open world, kind of a more uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus style of uh, game, if what we saw from the trailer of uh, Scarlet and Violet, which are the next upcoming Pokemon games later this year, uh, is, you know, indicative. Um, so having a, a very old school, but modern take on an old school Pokemon game like this, uh, I think is, is really opportune right now. And, um, it seems very well considered. It's very clear just from a little bit that I've played here that the, the developers are big fans of Pokemon and had a laundry list of things, like I said, that they thought that the series could do better, you know, and have, have implemented that here. Um, and it just feels good. It feels very polished. It feels well considered. Um, I, I don't know in the long term how it's going to pan out, but so far so good. Like, I really think this feels very strong so far. Uh, I'm absolutely going to be playing more. I'm really keen to see more of the Coromon. I think the designs look really good, and uh, all of the art looks excellent, actually. I think it's a really appealing-looking game. So, uh, I'm excited about this. I like it a lot. I'm absolutely going to play it more. Uh, if you guys want to check it out, I will put that link down in the video description. I think it's about 15 bucks right now. I think it's on a a sale for just launching. It's like 20% off when I bought it. So if that interests you, you can check it out down there. I hope that you enjoyed this video, my friends. It's a glimpse, uh, maybe more than a glimpse. I think it's going to be pretty long at Coralmon, which could be a better Pokemon than Pokemon. It certainly looks like it has the potential and that's pretty exciting. Uh, I hope you found it interesting, and of course, I hope you found it relaxing. And I look very forward to having you back here next time. Farewell for now, my friends.